Hello there. My name's Gina Gardner, and I'd like to welcome you to the third of the Empath series. <clears throat> I'm joined today by Lizzie Bernthal. Dr. Lizzie Bernthal is a mindset leadership coach, international speaker, author, and a well-being, resilience, and cultural change specialist who supports authentic leaders and ex-military to stand tall, rediscover their voice to own all of who they are so they can soar. As I say, my name's Gina Gardner. I'm an international best-selling author. I'm the host of the W4CY TV and radio show. And I have over 30 years of helping leaders and empaths step into being their very best self. And this series is designed to help those people who are either just recognizing that they are an empath or empaths who know that they're empaths, who really want to fulfill their divine destiny. And there is an important role for empaths to play. Their capacity to be sensitive, to think and to feel beyond what most people recognize is so important. But we are at a time of accelerated development and those people who are not um, ready to move on will get left behind. We have a big job to do. And our job is to help humanity move forward. My particular brief is to help people become the leader of leaders. So today's show is all about understanding how those things which hold you back are something that you can really change and recognizing how important it is for you to step into being your very best self and recognizing, as we've already said before, that your best self of today is the foundation to be the best self of tomorrow. Understanding what limits us is, as we said in the last video, really important because if you don't do that and you're not aware, you're powerless to do anything about it. So Lizzie, I know that you've been uh, doing my 30 day boot camp. I've actually been doing both challenges at once because you're <laughs> very, very keen to accept. No time to waste. <laughs> So what are the things that you have started to understand that were holding you back? It's stuff from my childhood. I think it always goes back to our childhood. Um, and it, it's been really a great opportunity to think sort of deeply about what stories was I, make, were I make, was I making up? And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's, you know, I think that's really powerful for us to acknowledge what are the stories that we're making up that are not based on reality? They're based on our child when we're six, seven, that obviously hasn't got that logic. But, you know, that, that belief that if the world should be different and if it's not, it must be me. And then you acknowledge so this is absolutely nothing to do with us. You know, whether a teacher tells you not good enough or your parents shout at you or something happens or abuse, whatever, whatever degree of it, Yes. That sets up that childhood belief. It must be me. If I was okay, this wouldn't have happened to me. And unless we're aware of that and we start challenging that, that just that is the blueprint for the rest of our lives. And that's what's so important to unpick it. It's interesting you weren't use the word blueprint because I think we all have a blueprint for how things should be. Um, there's a very rude poem I'm not going to give you the title over because it is so rude but it it is about how parents muck you up um, yeah. and um, ultimately it's because as children we have a blueprint of how we should be loved of course our parents don't have the same blueprint and so there is a, a miss often a mismatch but we have a blueprint for how other people should treat us a blueprint for how lucky we should be Interestingly, they've done some research around luck. They asked people to identify how lucky they were, and they were on a continuum from very unlucky to very lucky. They then set up the experiment where each person was invited to drive to a specific house, where they had between the car park and the house hidden money, exactly the same for everybody, different denominations, different amounts and different places. Without exception, the unlucky people saw nothing and the very lucky people saw lots and the lucky people saw some. So we set up these, um, e these expectations and how open we are 
to noticing how observant we are determines what opportunities there are there. And so often there's opportunities that are just right in front of people's faces, but they don't see it. And so for me, so much of, of how we grow, how we evolve is recognizing the things that are holding us back, understanding why, but not wallowing in it. Recognize and then choose to leave it behind and to reinstall something more empowering or to allow that to, um, to go on. Now, I'm just going to read you just a few examples. And as you're listening to this, I want you to think about, is this you? Now this comes out of Accelerate Your Authentic yeah, yeah. So common limitations, poor self-worth, we talked about that. Holding on to the illusion of the stories, and believing them and why it's not possible for you to put I could if only such and such happened then I could do it and then looking for justifications of your story okay so then because our beliefs are installed early and then we look for those beliefs don't we we actually interpret everything based on those beliefs so a story I commonly will give clients is you're in a park there's two people, one dog. The dog comes bounding up to one person who was bitten when they were three, very, very nervous of dogs. As the dog approaches, they go, go, no, no, go away, go away. The dog gets frightened, it growls. Their belief that all dogs are dangerous is confirmed. The dog goes over to the second person who thinks the dog looks like a dog they had when they were little, welcomes the dog and says, hello boy, how are you? Dog wags its tail, gives them a lick. Their belief that all dogs are friendly is confirmed. It's how we do it. We look for confirmation that our beliefs, our stories are correct. Time to challenge them. Now, fear of failing. How many people have you known who are frightened of failing? I think everybody. I mean, I think everybody. And yet we all know that's our greatest learning. It's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. fear of failing or the possibility that I might fail for many people keeps them stuck in, well, if I don't try, I haven't failed. When my view is the only failures are the failure to give it a go or when mm -hmm. things don't yeah. go right, the failure to learn. It's but merely feedback. I, I always tell, you know, with individuals I always say there's no such word as failure failure is purely feedback that it's just not work that way so what the learn you get from that so it'll work better the next time do you know how many prototypes Dyson made before he made his first saleable hoover? probably thousands like the light bulb like I always quote Edison and the light bulb yeah. you know thousands of times and then suddenly it ping it worked yes and can you imagine what would have happened if he'd given up at 999 or however many he did well yeah. Dyson we're told it's 2000 you're for, for yes. spot on there and I think you know, we 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 need to learn to fail better we need to use that feedback as a lovely way of looking at it um, to enable us to then adjust um, and to not throw the baby out with the bathwater, but to adjust things or to know when to stop or know how to move on. And it's such an important part of life. But many, many people, and I think particularly empaths, are frightened of success. Who will I be if I succeed? My, my divine purpose feels too big. How am I going to do it? And they get into the what ifs and the hows rather than just recognizing you've got a divine purpose. If you get out of your own way, then it will evolve and it will emerge in a way that's manageable. But if you fear success, then you are never truly going to step into your power. And I think it's so important as an empath that you recognize what an incredibly powerful being you are. Now, if you're an empath and you're already doing great work, this is one, okay? Recognize you ain't seen nothing yet, that you're scratching the surface of your potential, a bit like an iceberg, just scratching the 10% that's above the water. And when you truly step into your power, everything opens exponentially. And you are equal to it. All of those struggles when you were younger, all of those things that have happened have been preparation. 
And you have the strength if you believe it. But if you believe that, you know, I can't succeed or if I succeed, I'm not going to be able to manage, then you're never going to truly step into your potential and embrace the whole of your power. And that would be sad because you've got a big job to do. So I just want to revisit. Yeah. Go on. No, I'd love to hear. Something. I just think it's interesting. I think I think <laughs> I, obviously I relate to all that you've just said. I think it, it's the incongruence. I think that's where we, we really need to be aware and to challenge. Because if we've, from something that's happened in our childhood, that's brought up that belief with I'm not good enough, there's such um, incongruence between I am who is successful and making a difference in the world. And that's why it's so vital to unpick that stuff, I'm not good enough. Because it's that that's stopping us. Because if I'm not good enough, I can't succeed. Therefore, if I do succeed, and it's, it's just challenging those beliefs, is so <laughs> crucial. And you're right, the, the, the self-worth is, the for me, that's the bedrock. Get that right, and all of these other things fall into yeah. place more easily. But I just want to, just a few things, that, and there are lots and lots of patterns. Um, failing to give yourself permission to step out of your comfort zone, because it doesn't feel safe, and recognising that you have to do things that are different. Now, I started Genuinely You, uh, about three years ago. Before that, I had no internet presence. You know, making a video um, would have seemed impossible. And when I, did the first few I did were dreadful. But of course, like anything, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And now it feels quite natural. So ultimately, it is about you being prepared to step out of your comfort zone. Failure to take radical responsibility. We talked about that. But what about staying stuck in the trauma, past trauma. Really common, many empaths that I've come across, uh, I have to say not all, but many empaths have had really challenging times in their childhood abuse. And that has kept them stuck. Forgiveness is the way out. And it's important to recognize that forgiveness is not about condoning and it's not about forgetting but it is about recognizing that out of that experience that you have grown in strength and you have the capacity to use that strength for other people. You know, forgiveness is so powerful, isn't it? 100%, yeah, it is. I mean, I think it is the key. And I think that's the, as you acknowledge, it's, you're not, as you say, it's, you're not underestimating the impact it's had. You're not underestimating whether it's, you know, how bad, it, good or bad it was and evil or whatever it is you want to talk about it. But, you know, forgiveness is 100% key. And also gratitude, although that sounds really bizarre. But the gratitude, because that event or sequence of events has made us who we are today. And it's, and also acknowledge that how strong you are because the very fact you survived that and you're carrying absolutely. on with your life and it's just absolute testament to, to the challenges that you overcome and what an extraordinary person you are by very fact you've overcome it all. Absolutely and it can be the rocket fuel that yeah. projects you forward. Just to go back to forgiveness for a moment is to recognize that when you forgive someone you cut the chains that keep yanking you back to the past. And if that event or events keeps yanking you back, the perpetrator is continuing to win, okay? And that you are not able to be fully present in the moment or for the future. So it is absolutely vital that you allow yourself, give yourself permission to forgive the perpetrator and then forgive yourself for holding on. Often people who've been abused feel some responsibility towards it, although it's not their responsibility. But the responsibility for holding on to things is your responsibility. So forgiving others, forgiving yourself, cut the chains. Because if not, it's like taking the poison and expecting somebody else to die. And it, I have watched people, it takes 10 years of them. It's as if the weight has been lifted off their shoulders, that they are finally free when they choose to forgive. And it is, again, back to an active choice, but it is so powerful. If you need help, 
please reach out. But what about procrastination or perfectionism or comparatonitis? You know, I'm not as experienced as them. I'm not as good as them. Does that, does that negate what I have to offer? Of course it doesn't. This is a good one. I've met many empaths who go on course after course after course after course. They study and they study and they study. They're the perpetual student. And I can remember talking to, um, to um, uh, one of my clients, incredibly powerful, doing great work, who believed that the only way she was going to be good enough was if she consistently spent you know, four or five weeks a year, spending a lot of money going and, and being working with a guru. And when I said to her, you know, when's enough going to be enough? Of course, learning is important. I'm not saying don't learn, don't go on programs and courses. I run them myself. And of course, I want you to come on them. But it's when you use that as a barrier to being who you are and doing your work, rather than using it to embrace, embrace who you are, to empower you to be even better, it's about the motivation behind it that's so important. And once you recognize that actually you are enough and that if your intentions are good and if you set the intention that you're going to be helpful, that you hold the space for that person, actively listen and you know, make it about them and not about you, you won't do any harm and you will do great good. So that's another one. Um, always looking for external validation. I was talking to another client, amazing lady, runs wonderful programs, but all the time looking for people to say, that was brilliant, well done, rather than being the arbiter of, of um, her standards herself. It was only good if somebody else said it was. And so, you know, we all have those things which hold us back. Your choice, what are you going to do? So, want to talk to you about the way in which you can move forward. We talked about awareness. Being aware is the first thing, not being judgmental, but also starting to think about how does it feel? How would it feel if you don't feel it? Imagine it to be delivering your purpose in its divine shape in the way in which it was destined to be if you're being the best version of you so lizzie share your purpose because if people haven't listened to the first couple of videos or they've forgotten what's your purpose in life uh, my purpose is to let, let leaders stand tall own who they are so they can soar and in, just as you were saying earlier on so they can be the leading light for others and also to help businesses be values purpose driven. And so that every single person in that organization absolutely believes what they're doing and has a passion to do what, what is required of them. Um, and in the process of that, you know, we all have a best version of ourselves. And I just think it's tragic that the majority of, of individuals don't even scratch the surface. And it was interesting you were talking just then about the comfort zone. I call it the familiar zone because yeah. it's actually never comfortable because when we're, in the com when we're in the comfort zone, actually what we're telling ourselves is that I know I should be doing better than this. I know I should be pushing myself, but I'm really scared. So I'm not going to, so I'm going to sit here and that feels horrible. So yeah, it's getting out of yourself and just stepping up because when you step up, the world opens and then we can help the world open for others and it's just the ripple in the pond effect okay so you partially answered but why is it so important that you fulfill your divine purpose because i was put on this planet for a reason and if i don't fulfill it then i uh, that's what i really see as true failure true failure is not delivering the destiny that you've been put on the planet to do so now I want you to imagine that you're 732. I don't want to limit your lifespan, okay? And that you're looking back over your life, okay? And yeah. you really can recognize that you have fulfilled that purpose. 
How will that be? Yeah, it'd be amazing. I mean, everybody would know me because I have transformed so many lives, whether it's through books, whether it's through public speaking, whether it's just through programs I've done. And I've enabled millions of people to step into who the person they were meant to be and get rid of all that stuff that's stopping them. It's interesting, isn't it? I want you to notice the energy that comes when Lizzie is talking about her true purpose. She comes a light. She is being the best version of herself. And all of the other stuff that we were talking about before is just stuff. And yeah. you can let it go, just as if you had a balloon filled with helium and you went outside and let go of the string, it's gone. Replacing that with the confidence that you don't have to know it all right to start with. You know, the how will emerge as you go through when you get out of the way um, and recognizing that you know there are people there to help you. Working with a mentor can be really helpful um, because they can actually challenge you and support you and perhaps direct you um, in a particular way. My purpose, as I've said previously, is to support and help leaders of leaders to be the very best they can be. Because if you think about it, we are all the leaders of our own life. We are every moment of every day. We take ourselves into every situation. Isn't it interesting that people don't see the patterns of behavior? I mean, how many people do you know that have been through one toxic relationship after another or have sabotaged themselves when things are going well uh, and things are just beginning to take off? They give up or they do something silly. But ultimately, like a stone being thrown into a pond, when you throw a stone into a pond, the ripples ripple out. And so whether you're leading your family whether you're leading your team in an organization, whether you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, whether you are a big corporate owner, whether you are the prime minister or the leader of a country, you have a responsibility to be the best version of you and that everything you do has an impact on other people, on the environment. And it's interesting that many people say, but what can I do? There's just me. And ultimately, your choices moment by moment, day by day, make a difference. You know, whether you recycle a piece of cardboard or not, whether you walk past somebody who looks unhappy, whether you do a random act of kindness, you talked about gratitude. One of the most powerful things you can do is to collect gratitudes during the day, because you have to be in the moment, don't you? And so many of us spend our time being worrying about what has happened, or being anxious about what might happen and may never, that they miss being in the moment. I think it, it, I was in a video too, you talked about the journey being as important as the destination. And so many of us miss enjoying that journey because we're so busy trying to, to, to get to the destination. And in doing so, they miss every opportunity. So what's your purpose? Ask yourself the following questions. What is my purpose? Why is that important? What's the impact it will have? And how will I feel when I've achieved it? And if you just journal about those, just take yourself off to a quiet place, meditate or journal about that, and just ask yourself those questions over and over again, and just allow what comes to, to, um, to be okay, um, you'll start to make contact with that inner voice of yours and ultimately through that with greater consciousness. And we're going to explore that um, in the next video. So thanks Lizzie for joining me today. Thank you. And we'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.